Hey guys! Alright folks, we're here today to give you a preview of Prog Power USA 2023 happening September 6th to September 9th in Hotlanta, Georgia. Four days of metal, four days of great music, great bands, great festival. So I'm super hyped, we're both super hyped. Yeah. Our first time attending Prog Power, creating all sorts of content that you guys are going to be able to see once we're back into Canadian soil and I'm able to edit the videos and put everything together and if you are attending Prog Power look for the two of us so yeah, you come, can be in the videos exactly but come say hi I always like seeing viewers no but I want to also ask questions see how people are feeling that's and true who, you know, be who, part of like interviews yeah like who was your favorite band of the day like who surprised you the most you guys want to be on an A&P Reacts video come and see us at Prog Power we'll make sure you'll get in the video alright well, I don't know if it's going to be like a great take but we'll get you in the video. You'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. So the the festival starts on Wednesday, September 6th with the following lineup. Doro, Swallow the Sun, Cynic, Elven King, and the Reticence. All right. Packed lineup on that first day. And I don't think you can start off a first day of a festival with a better headlining than Doro. Uh, I'm super excited. The Metal Queen, I've never seen her live. Uh, I don't even know if she's ever played in Toronto. Um, maybe she has, but not at least not in my lifetime since I've been living in Canada. Uh, so I'm super excited because it feels like a headliner of a European festival, but in in Uncle Sam's backyard. Backyard. Yeah. So with I'm a ticket fence around and everything. Yeah. I, and, and I'm loving that. And I'm loving that. And Bill Hudson plays guitar for Doro, good friend of mine. Dying to see him in person. We've never met in person, even though we've known each other for like eons before the universe was made me and bill we already knew each other so i'm dying to see this brother from another mother in person give him a hug a high five whatever he goes for these days and and chit chatting a little bit with him so outside of doro which is i'm sure uh one of the highlights it will be one of the highlights of day one who are you most excited to see uh it's got to be one got to be swallow the sun i okay. mean I, I i mean it's a band that i've been listening to for a long time now. You've never seen them? Never seen them. Because right? of all the age restrictions here in exactly. Toronto. Exactly. I'm finally hitting the age where I can start going to those shows. Um, but, but not have, quite yet. But not quite yet. And also Elven King, which is like a new love, right? Like, that, that's a band I've only been starting listening to, like... Recently. Recently. This year, I would say. Yeah, but... God, with their new, with their God, new they're such a good band. They so, are like, such a good band. And, and I don't know when they're going to, you know, cross over to the Maple Syrup Drinking Nation. So... I gotta, I gotta, like, I gotta make sure I see their set. I'm, I'm not gonna go far off from what you just said. Outside of Doro, the headliner, and, and not to take anything away from Cynic or, or the Reticence, uh, Swallow the Sun. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them, but not with the same level of excitement as you, because I've seen them multiple times. Yeah, and I haven't at all. I mean, I just saw them like recently, so uh, twice this year. This is gonna be my third time this year watching Swallow the Sun. Not that I'm complaining. I'm wow, not complaining. Wow, rivaling Ghost with that one because we saw them three times. I, I think right now Swallow the Sun is getting is creeping up there as one of the bands that I've seen live the most. So uh, I'm still excited to see them because it's at the end of their North American tour. So I'm excited to see the guys. I'm excited to see their performance. But to me, uh, as far as as like getting all giddy, uh, I think Elven King. Elven King, dude. Because it's a band that I think outside of this setting, especially for folks like us that don't go to like, you know, five, six, even three or two European festivals a year, we try to go to one here and there, pick, you know, pick our spots and go to one here and there. So outside of, uh, outside of Europe, to, be a, to have a chance to watch Elven King perform in a festival setting, I'm all for it. Yeah. They have a great new record, so I'm I'm dying to hear songs from the new album, from the old records. I'm just really looking forward to that performance. Definitely for me, uh, because of all the other circumstances, they are the one that I'm excited to see the most. Now, Thursday, September 7th, second day of the festival, the lineup is Beast in Black, Vola, The Halo Effect, Zero Hour, and Seven Kingdoms. All right, so... Who tickles your fancy there? I mean, obviously Beast in Black isn't a tickle my fancy, but I've seen Beast in Black, right? So twice, twice now, right? It's still one would argue that twice is still not enough. And I've seen them in a in a festival setting too. That's true. Uh, heavy Montreal, so their first ever North American performance. Exactly, but it's always nice to see these guys, and I'll. It doesn't matter what how many times they come to town, wherever they are, I'll always be there. 
Uh, but one of the ones I'm looking a, a little bit more forward to since I haven't seen them is the Halo Effect. I've never seen the Halo Effect, and um, I really enjoyed their their uh, album, so I'm, I can't wait to actually see them live. And Se Seven Kingdom is also one of those bands where I, I'm... Uh, it's one of those Tickle Me Fancy bands where I, I kind of want to see them too. So, the, for me on this day, it, it's an interesting day. For, first of all, for the fact that there is no duds. I'm not saying that the, oh. the previous day there was any duds, but... And, and as, as, we go, day, as we go along, you'll see that this festival has no duds. There's no duds. But it, on this day, is one of those days that I highly recommend for those of you attending, that you pee through your eyelids, like sweat it out. Sweat it out. Because there's no time to go to the washroom. Back to back greatness. Like, like you don't want to miss any any of these bands. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a reason why you don't want to miss any of them. Now, Beast and Black are the headliners, as they should be. These guys should headline every festival around the world. They are the greatest thing since sliced bread and peanut butter and jelly. Uh, I love them. I'm actually going to see them again, part of their North American headlining tour, exactly a week after. Like a week after, like I get back from this festival and then I get to see them again headlining during their North American tour. They're playing in Toronto. Uh, I, I wouldn't miss that for for the world. Uh, it's 19 and over, so you can't go, but I'm taking your mother with me because we all know her love affair for yeah. Giannis. So there's that. So obviously I'm looking forward to see Beast in Black. Uh, seen them before. There's no such thing as seen them too many times. Exactly. No, I'll, I'll see them as many times as humanly possible or, or, or that I'm able to do it. So I'm looking forward to seeing them as the headliner on this day. Vola is one of these up and coming bands that I really feel like, like it's going to take, they're already taking that, the world by storm a little bit, but maybe in this market in North America, they don't have as much of a following as they do in Europe. I honestly feel like they're one of those bands that people on this day will go uh, excited to see other bands maybe, but they will be one of those bands that they will walk away talking about. I honestly feel that way about them. The Halo Effect, I saw them in Toronto during their headlining tour that yes, they did. did yeah. So I've seen them, but having said that, Fuck that, I, I'm dying to see them again. They're so fucking good. I'm dying to see them again, so I'm definitely excited about that. Zero Hour, never seen them live. Super hyped to see their set. And Seven Kingdoms, I just saw them in Toronto twice. I saw them with Wind the Rose, and then I saw them as part of their headlining tour. So, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than this. I, I feel like in the span of three months, about three months, I see Seven Kingdoms three times. Yeah, so I, it's it's all good. I'm not I'm well, not no, complaining one bit. Honestly, I'm actually pretty I'm pretty excited to see them just because you've seen them now twice. Dude, they're so good. And, and, and you, he's been nonstop saying how good they are live. So I've been kind of like like dying to see them. Especially, especially in like in the whole festival setting. So good live. They're such an incredible live band. So tight, so precise. With so fun sound, catchy, hooky songs that you can sing along. I mean, you can headbang, you can dance, you can fucking do whatever you want to do. Great band. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited to have them start off the day. I mean, what a, yeah, what a great what a way to start, way off, to the start off the day. So then on Friday, September 8th, we have Camelot, Caligula's Horse, Green Carnation, Ad Infinitum, Battle Beast, and the Cryptex. Well, if, if the if you, two if previous you, days you were not stacked, <laughs> I mean, like, this day, like... If you thought the day before wasn't, like, back-to-back -back greatness and you need to pee through your eyelids, this one is, like, you need to sweat your piss. It, it, you know what this reminds me? This reminds me of PSG. First they signed Mbappe, and everybody's like, oh, fuck, they got Mbappe. Then then they got Neymar, and it's like, oh, fuck, now they got Neymar. Then they got Messi. Like, it, it kind of feels like we're going through that order here. Like, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So Camelot are the headliners. Uh, I just saw them during their North American headlining tour with uh, Battle Beast. So uh, I'm, I'm double dipping on, a lot, double of, dipping I'm on a lot of I'm double dipping on a lot of these bands. I've seen Camelot live before, so I'm always excited to see Camelot. But on this bill, there's some bands that I've never seen that I'm absolutely Dude, jizzing. I, I really want to see Caligula's Horse. They're one of those bands and, and, that I'm absolutely jizzing they're, about. They're, they're one of those bands where uh, their genre, I'm not a huge fan of, of other bands that are in that genre, but yet they do You it. know how you feel about Prague. Exactly. It's the way I feel about Prague. It's the way we feel about Prague, but the thing is, they do it in such a way where it's like dumbed down. <laughs> like, uh, I love it's it. It's at my level. It's at my level of, of intelligence. Like, I'm not a philosopher, but I'm, I'm definitely like, you know, a math teacher in, in elementary school, right? So, like, I... I it's 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 prog that I enjoy, and there's not many of those around. So I'm so excited to see them. Ad Infinitum, Melissa's Bonnie's band. 
Come on. I mean, you're going to see her with Camelot on the headlining spot of that day because True. she's touring with Camelot. She's doing the, the, the female vocals uh, on, on this Camelot tour, which I know for her is a dream come true because the first time we ever talked, I've known Melissa five years, six years since we've had the channel. And one of the first interviews that I did with her, she said that one of her dreams as an artist is to one day tour with Camelot and, and sing with Camelot. Fuck. You envision that shit and, and it's happening. And things come true. So I'm really happy for her. Plus she just got married. She just got married. So I mean life is looking up to, for her. Honestly No, it's all downhill from now on. I didn't tell her that. <laughs> oh, did I, she? I, I will tell her that when I see her in person, okay. but I haven't told her that I just sent you her. You hit my your peak. Yeah, I've just sent her my congratulations and, and, and whatnot to her and her husband. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's all downhill from now on. I, I also will be telling him that too because Amaranth is coming to North America on tour, so I will be seeing him. So I'll be able to give uh, her my my marital advice and then give it to him as well. I have experience. I feel like the one you're gonna give to him is, a is lot. slightly different from hers. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit biased. Yeah, yeah, slightly different from hers. So uh, get your own TV. So anyhow, uh, definitely looking forward to 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 add Infinitum. I I, I think on on this day. The, to me, there are three bands that that are the ones that I'm really nutting over, and that is Caligula's Horse, Green Carnation, and that Infinitum. Green Carnation are a phenomenal band. I honestly felt like I had to uh, do a, a Viking raid through Scandinavia in order to just go there and see these guys perform because I never thought that they would make it here. Uh, so because it's hard for these bands to come to North America, yeah, yeah. especially with visas and everything. So I, I'm absolutely dying to hear these guys live. I love this band. I discovered this band a couple of years back when I was reviewing their album that they released with Season of Mist. I absolutely love this band. Ad Infinitum, we already talked about. Battle Beast, I've seen them before. I love the guys, I love Nora. The only thing I want from Battle Beast is Black Ninja on that set list. Oh yes, come on. Because I've seen Battle Beast now multiple times. Not once did they ever perform Black Ninja. You gotta send a message. I, actually, I'm gonna send them a message uh, to make sure that they add that specifically just for me. Maybe I can even get a shutout. You never know. One, one Don't cannot. ask for too much. That's the song true. is perfectly enough. That's true. And then the band starting off the day is the Cryptex, who we've covered on the channel. Great prog band. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see their set as well. Uh, plus, uh, who, who did the guy remind me? Uh, Ron Swanson? No, no, the dude from... Uh, oh. No, it's a dude from uh, Step Brothers. What oh, fucking John, 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 John C. Riley. John C. Riley, Riley on vocals. So how can you not be excited about John C. Riley on vocals? Again, so, uh, what was his name? Uh, Dewey Cox. Yeah. Dewey Cox Dewey on Cox. vocals. So on the final day of the festival, September 9th, Saturday, September 9th, we have Myrath, we have Unleash the Archers, we have The Lane, Visions of Atlantis, Evil Invaders, and Poverty's No Crime. All right. What a way to finish off with some of the best of the best. Now, who on this lineup is has your 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 panties in a knot? Well, obviously, Elise the Archers. I feel like that one is a, a gimme on that one. Um, you know, I've never seen them live. You've never seen them live? No, because every time they had a, a tour... Actually, they're coming to Toronto. They're going to play in Toronto in October, so we'll be able to go to that. Okay. Because you're no longer a minor at that point. You, you, not that you're a minor now. I'm a minor now. Uh, I know, but... Not 19. It, you're just not 19. So anyways, they're going to play in Toronto. They're doing a, an East Coast, uh, Canada East Coast oh, okay. uh, tour with uh, Luthero. Okay. So we'll be able to go see them. Uh, every time they've had a tour they'd scheduled for Toronto, some shit went down was before the pandemic got canceled. Yeah. As the pandemic was ending, and then the restrictions came back because of version uh, 29.9 of COVID, shit got canceled. So I, I feel like I've been blue balls as far as Unleashed the Archers are concerned, because every single time that they've had a Toronto date, that date has been scrapped. So they're coming back to Toronto in October. We're gonna be there, but we're gonna see them for the first, very, we're seeing a, a, the most iconic Canadian band of today, for the first live time, for the first time in the US. In, the, in America, yeah. Um, it is what it is, my friends. It is definitely what it them. Is. Uh, Delane, I feel like Delane is one that we're both excited to see. Yes, uh, for me, for different reasons, maybe than you. You've never seen them. I've never seen. But them. I saw them with the previous lineup. Yeah. My first time seeing them with this lineup. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. And for me, Delane, well, Delane has become a meme on the channel because of the gathering. So. Uh, but that was the previous lineup. That was the previous lineup. But the still, point. it's the meme in the channel. The gathering. The gathering. Like. <laughs> All right. God damn it. Like. But um, all right, Marco. <laughs> definitely that. <laughs> uh, Visions of Atlantis. Visions of Atlantis is definitely. Who doesn't love some pirates? Come on. Who doesn't like some pirates? Who doesn't want to be Jack Sparrow? 
I don't know anybody that doesn't uh, like Jack Sparrow. Evil Invaders, definitely a, a good a good band I want to see. And Evil Invaders is more than a good band. They're one of the best things to come out of out of Belgium since Waffles. True. One since, of the best, and since Belgium Jasper. No, 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 that one should have stayed there. <laughs> Actually, stay. I don't think he came here on his own. I think he was they deported. Kicked him out. They kicked yeah, him out. he was deported. How was he deported? Are they deported from his own country? country. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, but one one band out of this entire lineup. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about all these bands that I, I'm I, I've listened to and I want to see. But one band I'm very interested in seeing because uh, I've heard their music before. I've we've covered them, them on the channel. We've covered them on the channel. I enjoy them, but they're one of those bands where I never thought I'd ever be able to see them live. Is My Wrath. Never th th did I think I'd be able to see no, them No, neither did I. I'm s and they're the headliners. And they're the headliners. I'm super excited. Super excited. Uh, Delane and Visions of Atlantis are touring together, so similar to what's going to happen with Beast in Black, I'm going to see them exactly one week from that day. Damn. They're playing in Toronto the following Saturday. So we're going to see them on Saturday in Atlanta, and then the following Saturday they're playing in Toronto. And Beast in Black is playing on the Sunday. And Ginger is playing on the Friday. I mean, that week is going to be... Uh, I have five shows in a row. Uh, I'm off from work for two weeks, so I, I'm going to... I'll pick and choose. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna give it my uh, that old college try in, in order <laughs> to make it... Speaking of college, I'm in college. Then, yeah, so. yeah, but i got to give it that old college try in order to try to make it to as many as I can. Uh, because it's a stack, it's a stack lineup as far as Toronto is concerned. It, double, double bands here. I mean, I don't want to go into that, but there's like three shows in the same day that I could go see all three because it's all bands that I would like to see. But anyhow, it, it's not to be had. So the Lane and Visions of Atlantis touring together. Uh, so excited to see them there because just in case, because last time Visions of Atlantis was playing in Toronto, they were playing with Dragon Force. I got COVID the day before. So I, I couldn't go. So I'm excited to see these guys there and then hopefully see them a week later in Toronto. Uh, uh, two bands that I, I feel their sound goes really well together with one another. We already talked about Unleash the Archers. Uh, Myrath, I'm with you. Uh, maybe not as excited about it as you are. I think I think it tickles more your fancy than it does yeah, mine. Yeah, but I, I think, I think was, most of the excitement comes from the fact that I didn't think I was going to be able to see them. So Fair enough. Uh, uh, definitely something. Uh, a band that also... I'm, so I'm going into this knowing... Uh, basically all these bands except for one. Poverty is No Crime? I've never heard of them. I've never heard of them. But we've always been surprised by bands we've never heard. That's true. Uh, especially when we go to concerts. That's true. Uh, so well, I'm expecting to be blown, like maybe like... Uh, You're expecting it to be a good warm-up, a, a, a good way to get your foot in the door for that last day. Yeah, I'm, I'm also expecting to like not really be paying attention and then boom, it hits me and it's like, fuck, these guys are good. Because that's happened for a couple concerts Similar so to like Unto Others. Unto Others, yeah, Straight From The Path where we've seen them live and it's like, I don't know these guys, they play one song and I'm hooked. Okay. Right? So I'm hoping it's the same thing. Now, now one of the bands uh, outside of Unleash the Ar I think the one for me that's really uh, has me the most excited is Unleash the Archers for obvious reasons. Canadians, uh, Juno winners, uh, the greatest thing to come out of Vancouver since the Rascals. So, you know, the, the one that has me perhaps even more excited than Unleash the Archers is Evil Invaders. I love these guys. Great sound. This mixture of thrash and speed metal. I. You know, super cool. Some of the coolest Belgians I know, out, out, outside of, uh, um, hit me up with somebody here, um, uh, Axel Witzel. You don't know Axel Witzel though. I don't know him, but he's cool. He is. He is. He's, he's got a he's got a very perfectly quaffed fro. fro yeah. So I so used to have one too. Yeah, but not, not as good. But it's not. He doesn't have a fro anymore. No, not as good as a player either. True. So, but I feel like he had more power when he had his fro. It's like Samson. Samson. Exactly. It's like Samson. He was the Belgium Samson. So, anyways, I'm really excited about these guys uh, because once again, they're a band that tours quite a bit in Europe, plays a lot of shows, festivals, and everything like that. But when it comes to the North American market, you know, it's a lot diff It's a lot more difficult to come across the pond and and play here. Um, so excited to see these these imported Belgium waffles in, in the land of Uncle Sam. Uh, perhaps a little bit more of them because of those circumstances, because I know I, I'm gonna see Unleash the Archers, I've seen The Lane, I know I'm gonna see Visions of Atlanta. All of these other bands I know I'm gonna see. Uh, my wrath, I'm excited about them, but not to the same extent, because I like them, but they, they don't do for me what Evil Invaders does. Of course, I'm, I'm of more course. of an Evil Invaders You're more of a thrash dude. Though. Yeah, more of a, th those riffs, those riffs have me. So, uh, super excited to see what kind of bullet belts they're gonna have. 
uh, loving this lineup and, and like I said from the first day to this last day there are no duds there are no soft spots it's an incredible stack lineup every single day and by the way tickets for day one and day two are still available as of right now so we're gonna put some links in the description of this video so if you guys are planning on going unfortunately you cannot get the day, day three and day four but you can still do day one and day two those two days are pretty stacked as well and you get to see us I mean, that's worth something. Maybe not Maybe the price of a ticket, but definitely, hey, not. definitely worth something. So uh, I, we hope to see you all there. Come and see us. Come and talk to us. Be in one of the videos. We're going to be asking people questions. We're going to be vlogging. We're going to be recording. We're going to be busy. But don't be afraid to come and say hi. Be in a video. Uh, we would love to have as many of you in our videos as possible. It'll give you a chance to talk, to be on camera, to be on YouTube, if that's something that you aspire to do. I don't know who would, but hey, whatever. Uh, whatever tickles your fancy so we will be there all four days we're flying out september 5th the festival starts september 6th we're returning september 10th it's going to be a great time everybody's going to have a, a hot time in hot lanta and we hope to see you all there once again links to tickets for day one and day two in the description of this video and we'll see you all at Prague power see ya